ओके हाय एवरीवन वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल फर्स्ट एम आई ऑडिबल एम आई ऑडिबल प्लीज रिप्लाई एम आई ऑडिबल ओके ओके दैट्स ग्रेट तो इन दिस टुडे सेशन व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू एंड व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन दैट यू गाइस आर स्टडिंग एन ठीक है एंड व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम यूपीएससी परस्पेक्टिव this is our main focus because you are preparing for civil services okay so yesterday upsc has conducted the civil services preliminary examination and in this brief session what we are going to do we are going to show you that what upsc is expecting from you and whether we are fulfilling that expectation of upsc in our classrooms or not okay so in this session what we are going to do that we are going to show you the particular question asked by upsc in yesterday's exam and from where this question has been asked and is it that we have covered this particular question in our classroom or not okay so in this brief session like for economy there were around 17 questions and out of 17 questions 15 questions were just only from the core economy portion and from core economy portion i am not going to discuss all these 15 questions and i am not claiming that all these 15 questions are from our notebooks no no institution can claim that 100% paper has been set from their uh, notebooks okay so what we are going to explain that out of these many questions some of the questions are from our notebooks like for economy out of 15 questions that are from the core economy 12 questions are directly from our class notebooks but out of those 12 questions due to time constraint i am going to discuss only five questions over here okay and after this brief session about this whole jo bhi aapko whatever has been asked by upsc and whatever has been taught in our classes in our next session what we are going to do that what you guys are studying in your ncrts is it relevant with upsc is it like that upsc has asked this particular question and this particular question can be solved by from ncrt as well so there will be two different sessions and in this session we are mainly focusing on one thing that from where this question has been asked from our class notebooks okay so we'll start with the very first question in this particular question it is something related with inflation that who controls inflation in india whose responsibility is to control inflation in india and the uh, right answer is reserve bank of india is responsible to control the inflation okay now this particular question will also be there in your ncrts okay it is also based upon ncrt but this particular picture has been taken from the students notebook and it is in very raw form okay why we have taken this picture that so that we can show you that whether we have covered this particular question in the class or not so in this what we can see that as per the agreement it is monetary policy framework agreement monetary policy framework agreement and this is the line this is the answer to this particular question that the responsibility to control inflation is with rbi in india who is responsible who is responsible as per this agreement between rbi and government of india rbi is responsible to control inflation in india and it was it was very basic question we can say and it was the easiest question asked by upsc in this year's exam now the next if we say okay with reference to bank board bureau with reference to bank board bureau which of the following statements are correct now the beauty of upsc exam that you need not to be aware of all these options elimination method and for this year's exam majority of the questions you can solve easily very easily through this elimination method like in this particular exam what they have asked like just a second please it is something related with bank board bureau so in this the governor of rbi is the chairman of bank board bureau one first question first statement it is a recommendatory body which recommends the selection of head of the public sector banks okay 
बैंक बोर्ड ब्यूरो हेल्प द पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक इन डेवलपिंग स्ट्रेटेजीज एंड कैपिटल रेजिंग प्लान नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर आर सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट दो कैन से दैट सर वी आर नॉट अवेयर अबाउट वन सिंगल एनी वन ऑफ दीज ऑप्शन सो it is through the elimination method that you can solve this particular question because governor is not the chairman of bank board bureau uh, governor is the member of screening committee which recommends the name of the bank board bureau so this particular option is wrong and if this a option is wrong as per the elimination method the answer would be 2 and 3 now has it been covered in our notebooks class yes this is bank board bureau and it is clearly mentioned that bank board bureau has six different members and who is going to select these six members it is a screening committee which consists of government of india and rbi's governor so rbi's governor is not the member of bank board bureau he is the person he is the person who select the member of bank board bureau so from this what we can say second is it is a selection body selection body for public sector banks it is a selection body for public sector banks like answer 1 this one particular option is wrong 2 and 3 is right so again one of the we can say again moderate level first question was the easiest one this one is of the moderate level we can say now the third is with reference to indian economy following statements are there a share of the household financial savings goes towards government borrowings theek hai like if i am saving something some of the share of my saving it is going to government of india okay the dated securities issued by the government at the market related rates is auctioned from a large component of internal debt matlab whatever debt government of india is taking from within india large portion of this debt is in the form of dated securities dated securities matlab government securities which are government bonds now again this is something which has been covered in the class like ownership of indian government bonds ownership of the bonds released by the government of india theek hai now as per this this is the scenario this is the distribution that some of the commercial banks some of the cooperative banks reserve bank insurance companies and others they have invested their money in government of india's bond matlab dated securities okay so from this the question is dated securities issued at the market rates in auctions form a large component it forms a large component okay so yes it forms a large component and second one is a share of household financial savings like if i am saving something i am investing in kisan vikas patra i am investing in small saving schemes again this is the part of government borrowing from within your economy okay so anjali is there first of all let me clarify anjali is asking sir is there any class for a particular topic in today's session so anjali today's session is all about what you need to study where you need to focus so might be possible that we are not taking a class mainly specifically for a specific topic but in today's class it is all about the value addition it is all about your strategy what kind of strategy you need to crack this civil service examination so from my side what i can say that you must attend this session now it's up to you beta okay so the next question is with reference to indian economy consider the following statements if the inflation is too high reserve bank of india is likely to buy government securities government of india is likely to buy government securities it is something related with your monetary policy so monetary policy is something which control inflation in the market which control the prices in the market so in this particular question again this question can be solved from the elimination method like if inflation is too high reserve bank of india is likely to buy government securities it is something related with open market operation so open market operation is something in which rbi it can either sell government securities in the market or it can purchase government securities from the market so as per this what has been written over here that under omo rbi will sell or purchase 
government securities in the market okay now by rbi only it is all about government securities so and in case of in case of inflation in the market the purpose of rbi is to control the fully, uh, flow of money in the market so it will try to reduce the supply of money in the market so in that case it is not going to purchase securities from the market it is going to sell the securities in the market so again this first statement is wrong and second and third jo hai it is right again from the elimination method easily you can solve this particular question last question from economy i am going to discuss now with reference to indian economy consider the following statement this question is something related with exchange rate of two different currencies it is something related with exchange rate so rear and near nominal effective exchange rate real effective exchange rate okay an increase in nominal effective exchange rate indicates appreciation of rupee yes very right now again as i said the beauty of exam is through elimination method you can easily crack this question as well now an increase in real effective exchange rate indicates improvement in trade competitiveness this trade competitiveness is at international level now this question this particular statement is wrong again from the elimination method if this second statement is wrong so answer would be 1 and 3 suppose you are not aware about these two statements so in our in notebook this is something related with real effective exchange rate now written over here is if real effective exchange rate increases it means currency is overvalued your currency is overvalued as compared to your trading partners and if your currency is overvalued that means exports will be less competitive in international market your products will become lesser competitive in international market it is clearly written over here in this particular notebook and from this particular point you can easily solve this particular question that this particular statement is wrong so the question answer would be 1 and 3 so this is how uh, now some of the students may think that sir every statement you has not covered you have not covered in your uh, syllabus mark my words and that upsc is something which will make sure that from it will add it will use every basic source it will use ncrts it will use current affairs to formulate your question okay so this is what is must that your basics are strong and all these five questions can be easily solved if your basics are very much strong okay so is there any doubt is there any doubt whatever we have discussed about economy now after economy we will discuss about geography we will discuss about environment and this is very important session why it is important because it is showing you where you need to focus how you need to focus okay and why you need to focus on one particular area don't worry those who have not read these ncrts don't worry you are going to read and we are going to take this particular session another session in that particular session we will show you that from ncrts how many questions has been asked by upsc and is it possible that by covering the whole ncrt you can cover 100% of upsc syllabus so it is not possible first of all let me tell you ncrt is the base you cannot cover 100% upsc syllabus only through ncrt so ncrt is the base out of these five questions two question you can easily solve from the ncrt knowledge only okay the remaining three questions you can solve from the advanced courses okay is it clear is it okay with everyone classes and everything the class will go on zoom or all uh, it will be clear to every one of you don't worry and mainly this class will be taken on the zoom every day okay so i think uh, there there is no doubt left 
बेटा सदाना इफ यू आर वीक इन इकोनॉमिक्स डोंट वरी ठीक है डोंट वरी आफ्टर वी स्टार्ट विद इकोनॉमिक्स आफ्टर वी वी आर डिस्कसिंग दिस बेसिक्स एज वेल एज एडवांस कोर्स आफ्टर अटेंडिंग ऑल दिस कोर्सेज आपका इकोनॉमी जो है इट विल नॉट रिमेन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर है ना जो सिचुएशन आपकी के वीकनेस एंड ऑल वो सब शॉर्ट आउट हो जाएगा ओके डोंट वरी डोंट वरी इकोनॉमी में वीक हो या अच्छे हो डजेंट मैटर बिफोर यू आफ्टर ज्वाइनिंग दिस सेशंस वो सारा का सारा इशू जो है इट कैन बी रिजॉल्व ओके सो नाउ आई एम वाइंडिंग अप माय दिस पर्टिकुलर इकोनॉमी सेशन एंड नाउ रेडी सर विल टेक अप फॉर द जोग्राफी सेशन ओके बाय टेक केयर नॉट बाय आई एम गोइंग ओके रेडी सर इज कमिंग Good evening, students. I hope many of my NCERT students are here. Akanksha Jain, hello, and a very warm welcome. I know Mohit sir has now discussed uh, his current economics, and you will now be seeing most of the questions of UPSC examination with respect to environment, geography, and those students who have already who have already attended my geography se sessions, they would be knowing the value of our NCERT batch. because there are certain questions without even getting into the advanced level the questions are at very very ease only with the basic knowledge whatever we have explained in the geography you will be able to answer right so let's quickly get into the first question of geography here geography and environment see i'll be showing you the sources directly from the classroom i'll be showing you the proofs also kahan se questions aaya where exactly are the questions from right here is the first question of our geography and environment session the first one is consider the following pairs wetland they asked to pair the wetland and the location hokera wetland punjab renuka wetland himachal pradesh and then rudrasagar lake tripura shastamkota lake tamil nadu right so if you see here even if someone knows there are around somewhere around 50 ramsar wetland sites in my class i have told them do not remember all of this how do you have to answer whenever these kind of questions are there in the ramsar sessions especially if you see see this is how i have discussed earlier this was my previous class i got the habit of taking up the newspapers just i have got the habit of taking up the newspapers into the classroom for the first 10 15 minutes the current affairs will be discussed in every class right right see this particular question has been solved in the ipae 1 2022 online may so this is the question in this we have discussed what is a wetland why are they important what exp experts have to say about this the answer to this is nothing but if you see this answer was discussed anywhere on 24th may of 2022 this particular topic in this topic i have discussed the definition who decides conventions importance of wetlands and new sites so in this if you see the sites i have also shown you what exactly are the wetlands definition kya hota hai and specially on this particular day i have already told that there would be question from the ramsar convention sites and if at all there are any questions what you have to do is you need not remember all of this 50 there are most of the wetlands present only in the plains that to in the northern plains so in order to solve this you have to remember the wetlands of the south india and the wetlands of the east northeast asia northeastern side so by that easily you can eliminate that answer and this is what i have been telling you in the previous class as well previous class in the sense this is i have also solved this uh, ramsar convention sites i have told them this is where you can get the question from if you see these are the questions and this is how the question is exactly asked in the upsc examination right and many of you are asking for my name my name is madhusudan reddy right i teach i take up geography environment and current affairs for raj malhotra ias right okay this is the first question on ramsar wetlands and on the ramsar wetlands we have dealt in very detail and we are successful come finally we are successful in solving that particular question right see and this is the next question that has been asked in the yesterday's classroom so consider the following states and they asked how many of the above are generally known as tea producing states so 
आंध्र प्रदेश केरला हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड त्रिपुरा इफ यू नो द आंसर प्लीज कॉमेंट इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन If you know the answer, please comment down in the comment section. Though it seems like a very easy question, but this is the current affairs question, guys. So Mauni says B, Ajay Pal Singh says C. Kerala, Kerala. Many of you says Kerala. Okay, that's very good to hear. See, guys. Now, look at this. This article I have discussed in the classroom in the IPE two batch, environment seventh of May. and i have told on that day clearly if at all there will be questions the questions will be on the location based right if you see here see guys you can see a map though this has not much clarity because we have taken it from our uh, portal see tea plantations in nilgiri valapari hit by inadequate supply of the fertilizers right and i have also given a small map on that day himachal pradesh kerala and northeast right these are the three options which i have shown in the previous class now how to answer this get back in that take out andhra pradesh andhra pradesh is where the coffee is grown and in the andhra pradesh the coffee that is made at araku araku coffee even today the queen queen of england even till date she drinks the same coffee right andhra pradesh is for coffee it's not a tea kerala himachal pradesh and tripura is the answer right the answer is kerala himachal pradesh and tripura is correct that means only three statements are right right that is the question and look at the next question and i expect you to answer this as and when i show the question so that you will get to know about the idea how to solve or what kind of questions will be asked in the advanced level right and this is a question from environment i am sure pralad sir will also be discussing this question in the from tomorrow onwards your environment class this is a question that has been asked in yesterday's upsc examination the question is certain species of which of the following organisms are well known as cultivators of fungi the answer here is cultivators of fungi are nothing but ant now how is an ant a cultivator of fungi why is this question been asked this question is being asked because there is separate concept that we have discussed and we know the major reason why this question been asked let me show you why it is being asked and this is the question that has been this topic has been discussed in the ipe2 2022 online batch and offline batches as well here i have clearly told about c there is an ant what does ant do ant takes up small small sweet particles along with that your ant will also take up the leaves it mix those leaves it also mix those sugar that is when it ferments to make up to make up the fungi and ant eat will ant will eat that fungi right that fungi is also a nitrogen fixing bacteria right that fungi is also a nitrogen fixing bacteria and we have already discussed this question in the previous classes itself so the answer is here and along with that i have also discussed certain other species where exactly the question can be asked in the probable uh, ipe2 batch students will be knowing when i told them that this is the question you will you might get it right and finally we are successful that we have estimated along with that i have also told encircled on that day especially on 9th of may just a month before the examination i have told them you should also look forward for fungi because fungi is in news from then and today there is a fungi question that has also been asked in the name of gucci gucci is a fungi grown in which place if you know the answer please comment down right so the answer here is a and this is how we have discussed and my students will definitely be knowing the value of the examination whoever has written and most of the students who have come they have clearly told us that while solving the examination sir this is what our classroom has been a memory to them because classroom se kafi sare questions nikle and here we have the proof we are showing it so gucci i get an answer from mohit siddhu siddhu says odisha odisha is not the answer it is from himachal pradesh and northern states northeastern states mein nahi hai right now this is the next question that has been asked in the upsc examination with respect to a species right and this species i have already discussed in the class i'll show you which class we have discussed it which of the following is not a bird which of the following is not a bird it is said that golden mashir indian 
Nigat, Nigatraj, Spoonbill and White Ibis. Here the answer is, go back, I have discussed in the environment classroom that is May 22nd, May 11th of May, sorry 11th of May ko that I have also shown you a fish species here that is golden mashir and this is the species which is found in the Himalayan region, right. And look the date, even you can find the date also what we have shown here, right. And most of you are answering it right. So, please try to answer it. You will also be acquainted with the kind of current affairs questions, what kind of current affairs questions are asked, right. Clear? Okay. And the next question, here we have the next question. The next question is, please look into the question. Consider the following pairs, peaks and mountains. You have to match the peaks and you have to match the mountains. This was the question that has been asked. Namcha Barwa is in Garhwal Himalayas. Nanda Devi is in Kuman Himalayas. Nokrek, sorry for the uh, spelling mistake here. Nokrek is in Sikkim Himalayas. So, Deepthi says that answer is 1 and 2. Deepthi says that answer is 1 and 2. Which of the pairs given above is correct, correctly matched? So, Mosina Tariq says that A. See, the correct answer is we have already discussed in the classroom that is we have discussed in length and in very detail in our classroom, especially I have also drawn the maps. This has been drawn in the IP2 batch, the evening batch, where I have told that the questions of uh, potential area to ask questions is highly likely. You see, Nanda Devi is in Uttarakhand, which I, when I have shown the wildlife protection areas in Uttarakhand here and Nokrek, Nokrek and Nanda Devi, we have discussed in the classroom, I have also told there are Himalayas in these hills. Nanda Devi is in Uttarakhand, right? Nanda Devi is in Uttarakhand and along with that we have also discussed about the Himalayas in Sikkim and other areas also that I will show you. So, the right answer for here is Nokrek is not in Sikkim, Nokrek is in Meghalaya. Even if you know Nanda Devi in Kumaon Himalayas, the answer you would get to know that two only, right? Now, the next question is with reference to Indian laws about Wildlife Protection Act, consider the following statements. Wild animals are the sole property of the government. Please answer this question if you are aware of this. Let me check you, let me check what you are going to post. Suma says B, Ajay says B. See, with reference to Indian laws about Wildlife Protection Act, consider the following statements. Wild animals are the sole property of the government. Second statement is a wild animal is declared protected. Such animal is entitled for equal protection whether it is found in protected areas or outside. Apprehension of a protected wild animal becoming a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its capture and killing. These kind of questions can actually be solved by the etymology, by the language. If you look here, the word apprehension is used. Right? Everyone can have their own apprehensions. I can have an apprehension towards the animal. An animal, when it looks to me, look at, when it look at, looks at you, we can say that, oh, it is a potential danger to me. Can I kill that animal? Right? We cannot. There should be a threat. There should be a proven threat, not a perceived threat. Right? Through that, we the same kind of explanation we have already done here. The correct answer is A, one and two statements only, where we have discussed this. We have discussed on 13th of May in the IP2 batch. And here I have explained what exactly is a wildlife protection area. Apart from that, here if you see wildlife protection area 1972, why is it in use? I have already discussed. There is a wildlife protection amendment bill that is was also in use. We have discussed in detail. And if you see, we have discussed about the sacred groves, biosphere reserves, marine and terrestrial. The wildlife protection area is in detail discussed. And look here, we have also linked up with the article 21. That is the question that has been asked. It is said that animals do not know the boundary lines between states and the boundary lines between nations. So, it is a duty upon the human being to protect those animals because rights are given for the protection of those animals that rights are given to them, but they should they do not know to exercise those rights. So, that is the reason why we humans are given the entitlements and the government is the sole responsibility for protecting those rights. So, that is why the statement 1 and 2 is correct and under article 21, it, the constitution of India not only said that, it said that the constitution not only provides human rights, but also the rights of other species, 
protection of environment was an inseparable part of the right to life that means right to life is not just for humans it is also a right to life for animals right and government is the authority for that right if you see on 16th of may also we have discussed in detail and article 48 ke a ke saath link karke we have also told that animals are the properties of who is it the government is it or the private people right see the proof is in front of you where exactly we have discussed right 17th may 16th may series of discussions we have done right now there is a next question the question here is consider the following carbon monoxide nitrogen oxide ozone and sulfur dioxide excess of which of the above in the environment is or are the causes of acid rain the answer here i got is abhi says abhi says sulfur dioxide so please mention the answer here though you get to see this answer sorry okay ayush says b madhavi chandra says b nitrogen oxide kajal says b i believe it is d see the right answer is nitrogen oxide and sulfur oxide let us see what is this let's get back into our classroom 19th of may in the environmental pollution we have discussed about nox and sox nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides and they have explained in detail in the classroom notes also they i have told about primary pollutants quantitative analysis qualitative analysis of the pollutants along with this in this we have discussed nox and sox that is nitrous oxides and sulfur oxides they are the potential for the photochemical smog as well as as well as it is also for acid rain and this photochemical smog in the sunny during the time of the sunny their nature changes this we have discussed in the ozones right clear let us get into the next question the next question here is in the guidelines context of the world health organization air quality consider the following statements the 24 hour mean sorry here there is a small typo so please don't mind this consider let me so this is statement 1 2 3 and uh, okay this is statement 1 this is statement 2 statement 3 and statement 4 so please answer this the guidelines context in the guidelines context of the world health organization air quality consider the following statements the 24 hour mean of pm 2.5 should not exceed more than 15 m mu g per meter cube and annual mean of 2.5 should not exceed less more than 5 mu g per meter cube so the second statement in an year the highest level of ozone pollution occurs during the periods of inclement weather now what do you mean by inclement weather inclement weather is nothing but nothing but a disturbed weather right a disturbed weather pm10 can penetrate through the lung ba lung barrier and enter into the blood streams excessive ozone in the air can trigger asthma so the answer correct answer here is a and this the proof is here pm2.5 pm10 that we have discussed on 19th of may right and vishal say vhr says 3 and 4 galaxy says a right okay here we have kajal sir i have one query i am i am a demo student i joined 6th june batch sir will you teach the things again yes we will be teaching this again and again in the classroom as you are targeting for the next year this is just to show you how committed we are while we take up our classrooms right and we are good at predicting the areas where the questions can come and the proof here is in front of you right so we will be we will be discussing all of the things again and again especially the entire syllabus during the discussion of the syllabus we will interlink with the current affairs right clear now which books you have to study give me some time after completing this questions i'll address your answers in a thorough manner right come back and let's see another question and this was my favorite question because the day when i discussed this question i made sure pretty sure that this is going to be in the examination because there is a polar code for the first time there is so much of pressure that has been put on this polar code and india's arctic vessel one vessel which was being part of this polar code has to apply to those 
norms right see now what exactly is a polar code let us see i've told that in current affairs can be asked and this is the same dress which i'm wearing so it is almost a couple of months back i've told that which of the following statement best describes the polar code right see it is the international code of safety for ships operating in polar waters and it is the agreement of countries around the north pole regarding the demarcation of their territories in the polar region it is a set of norms to be followed by the countries whose scientists undertake research studies in the north pole and south pole it is a trade and security agreement of the members of the arctic council the correct answer please comment down please comment down okay most of you comments are a a a a right some of you say b the right answer here is polar waters code hai if any ship that is traveling in the polar region that ships need to adhere to certain kinds of norms right they cannot go they cannot use the trawlers they cannot use to break the ship break the ice there is a certain methodology that need to be followed and on that day particularly i have told that in the current affairs can be asked and here we are we have this question right see this is not to boost ourselves or this is not to showcase that these many questions are there it is just to show our commit commitment towards our own classroom and how exactly we predict the upsc right and it is not true that we may predict each and every question out of 100 questions if we are able to predict even 70 to 80 percent and our prediction rate is on an average around 70 percent for you to succeed you need not need 100 marks sorry 100 percent marks you only need 50 to 60 percent of the marks with that you will get your success and coming to the number of questions that have been asked from geography and environment alone accounted for more than more than 31 questions 31 questions plus just two subjects imagine if you are thorough with these subjects even if you get 25 to 27 right you will get somewhere around 55 marks or somewhere around 60 marks agar up qualifying range mein if you in order for you to get marks you only need you only need 90 around if you can get 50 to 60 marks from one subject that is geography and environment which are as twin subjects what more do you need guys so please make sure to take this subject very very seriously and let me show you another question here we have already dealt with this question so i would expect you to answer this question again because we have done this in a different way as well right match namcha barwa with Gar garwal himalayas nanda devi is present in kumavan himalayas nokrek is in present in sikkim himalayas please answer the question vittal says two only sehshu says b only the answer is b okay see in the previous topic uh, when this question has figured i have told you that this question can be addressed in a different way i have told you about nanda devi but in some other classrooms what we have done is we told that this is on the day of environment 25th of may in this classroom i have clearly told and in the classroom itself i have mentioned that make that there are three ranges of hills here here and here in meghalaya this is Kasi, Garo and Jayantia hills and here you have, here you have Nokrek Biosphere Reserve. This we have talked and discussed in very, very detail. The same kind of discussions you will also get to see in the further classrooms as well. And you got to know that Nokrek Biosphere Reserve is in this region, the twin IPE2 and on the date of 25th of May, right, our examination was 5th of June, just 10 days before. A revision class we have run and in that classroom if you got to know that no crack is not in sikkim it is in it is in which state please comment down it is in meghalaya that means if you can eliminate three and three you are left with a and b even with this 50 percent of thought process you can actually get 50 percent of the marks right right clear and here we have also discussed about sikkim himalayas that two on the same day and here you get an answers right and we have also discussed about ozone in very very detail and the proofs are here environment 24th may again and the next question is about coral skies right this is one of my favorite question i have discussed in in a very lengthy and thorough manner 
सी कोरल्स क्या होता है कोरल रीफ्स क्या होता है देर आर कोल्ड वॉटर्स एंड देर आर हॉट हॉट वॉट वॉर्म कोरल्स राइट वन रीफ्स एंड अदर वन डू नॉट रीफ्स नो वॉट इज दिस इफ यू सी इन द करंट अफेयर्स दिस इज ए क्वेश्चन ए टॉपिक दैट हैज बीन फिगर्ड आउट दैट इज वॉट इज बायोरॉक ठीक है दिस बायोरॉक टॉपिक आई हैव फिगर्ड इट आउट दैट दिस हाई पोटेंशियल दैट द क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ड हाउ because in the current affairs something those corals which have been lost their life how are we able to revive them and these coral reefs are considered to be the rain forests of entire ocean so if they are gone it is just like the primary producers of the food are gone so there is a question that has been asked biorock technology kya hota hai we have discussed in very detail it deals with the restoration of damaged coral reefs right and in the classroom itself i have told that artificial regeneration of coral reefs and here also artificial regeneration of coral reefs it is being taking place in the both the areas right and here we see the question and look at this question among the following crops which one is the most important anthropogenic source of both methane and nitrous oxide the answer here is rice the same rice is discussed in length and in detail it is winters it was chilling cold and in the during the winters also the ip1 batch we have discussed at length and in detail and here you have another question the question here is please answer this question if you know which one of the following lakes of the west africa has become dry and turned into a desert which lake i see many of you comment it as b but how do you know that the lake has been dried was there this art, was was there this lake any time in the current affairs no but how do we come to a conclusion that this lake has dried up this was an old current affairs question that has been asked back in 2021 in the early 2021s because there is a climate change conference that went on and india went to the glasgow glasgow is nothing but a place where our conference of parties for the 26th time with respect to united nations framework for the convention on climate change india went with a flag bearing that we have to revive our lakes and that is the reason why when the wetland convention took place we have come up with 10 new wetlands adding into the ramsar site so that is the importance which it has connectivity with respect to both the topics and this lake fugibine is in mali the correct answer most of you have commented it down the correct answer is right it is b see here this we have discussed on 9th of march and here i have clearly wrote lake dried due to dried due to climate change it is a lake that has dried due to climate change and let's go back and see this look at the wording which one of the following lakes of west africa has become dry and turned into a desert right we use the multi dimensional aspects of location anal analysis through our three dimensional globe so that makes us very easy it makes it very easy for us to understand in detail right see here generally it is a methodology which we use it here and it makes it very easy and the next question is the grand gandikota canyon of south india was created by which of the following rivers i know many some of my students if you see if you are from andhra pradesh please comment it down here please comment down your answer gandikota canyon of south india was created by which one of the following rivers kaveri manjira pennar tungabhadra what is the answer everyone answer c right sagar says 2d so i also see answer c look here again it is on the same day when we were discussing about the lakes in very very detail on that day itself i have told you this is one of the important component and that this can be asked any time in the coming years same day same time even if some of any telugu speaking guy is there i have wrote that the grand canyon of india usa you have grand canyon which has two times reached the basic level and in the telugu i have written it on that day because a friend of mine and a fellow student who is also attended that classroom right so on that day i have told the potential of this question is high and today we see it here right and the next question is about the solar storms 
again solar storms the major solar storms reaches the earth reaches the earth which of the following are the possible effects on the earth please comment down your answers if you are aware of the answer right okay <laughs> Man M. Navin says I am from Andhra Pradesh, Bagunara. So I get answer as C, B, right. Okay, if a major solar stream reaches the earth, which of the following are the possible effects on the earth? This has been the question that has been asked yesterday. GPS and navigation system can fail. Yes, it can fail. Tsunami could occur at equatorial regions. How can tsunami come? when there is gravitational waves ye to tsunami wave alag hota hai theek hai the elimination technique should work here this could occur equatorial regions pe tsunamis the answer is no power grids could be damaged yes intense auroras could be formed yes we have discussed this forest fires nahi ho sakta orbits of the satellite could be damaged yes there was a war like situation because of this in the early 80s and 90s thus we have discussed look at the, on the 17th of February, there is an article that we have discussed in our classroom, geomagnetic storms that kill the satellites. And here, I have also explained what are the possible effects that can be seen from the sun when the aurora, when the solar phase reaches onto the earth, how aurora borealis and aurora australis can be seen. Those beautiful lights at the northern poles are the northern lights which we call. It is because of this phenomena and we have also discussed about the warlike situation that has created between the Russia and the United Nations because they are not aware about the solar storms earlier and we have also discussed the coronal mass ejections which can cause because of this in detail at a length and you, the proofs are here on geography 4th of February you, you can see it here and I know many of my NCRT students who are watching me here you will definitely answer this question because it is hardly been a week that we have discussed about this. I see Mosin, I see Sinduja, I also see Ayapa, right? I expect an answer from you. In the northern hemisphere, the longest day of the year normally occurs in normal, normally occurs in first half of the month of the June, second half of the month of the June, first half of the month of July, second half of the month of July. Come back. When I explained you about the latitudes, I said there are some potential areas, right? It is done on 3rd of February in the main class and in our NCRT also we have done. Here, look here, the date is 21st June, I have written it on the board as well, right? 21st June again, 21st June is second half of the month of the month of the June, right? And a three dimensional diagram which you can see here, this is also 21st of June, right? Answer is June 22nd for some, but the technical answer should be June 21st. Even then, that is why UPSC is very smart. If UPSC gives a 21st of June, then some people would come up with, sir, answer is 22nd June. So, a matter of 12 to 16 hours, there is a difference when there is an earth that is rotating in and around. So, the UPSC played it very smart, right? It is smarter than you guys, whatever, what do you think? So, answer, whoever is commenting 22 June, it is either 21st or 22nd. In both the cases, it is right, right? And this we have discussed on 4th of February in the month, in the year 2022, right? And another answer, another question with respect to nitrogen fixing. And here I have clearly written on that day that helps in trapping the nitrogen fixation, right? See, and whatever we have ticked out, these are the options which you get to see in the question, right? Nitrogen fixation bacteria, right? nitrogen fixation can happen through bacteria the pulses which you eat or even the leguminous plants and not all leguminous plants can produce the nitrogen because in spite of nitrogen being abundant in the atmosphere only few animals and plants can take up the nitrogen that we have also shown through the root call disease and other the other desert oriented plants how do they fix the nitrogen and this on 10th of may right now the next question here, it is a dicey question, we do not even know what kind of answer can come in the UPSC examination, but look here. Consider the following statements, high clouds primarily reflect solar radiation and cool the surface of the earth. Low clouds have a high absorption of infrared radiation and emanating from the earth surface and thus causing warming effect. The answer here is D and 
we have done it on 7th of february 2022 right clear and we have also discussed about the clouds types of clouds kya hota hai kaun sa clouds mein which clouds has highest albedo and dust particles plus what is the wavelength hygroscopic nuclei we have also shown the different types of clouds what is the potential of the cloud in order to tap the incoming solar radiation and outgoing terrestrial radiation and as well as short wave radiation with the long wave radiation as well right so i won't be bothering you much with further more questions i'll simply show you the question and i expect an answer from you right so not just these questions there are many questions that have come up from the classroom itself right and further i would not be disturbing you much if you have any queries any queries you can call me on this number my name is madhusudan reddy theek hai and now pralat sir will be joining us for further questions where the potential areas which he have dealt and the questions that have been asked in the examination i now welcome pralat sir to take over is it audible okay fine so i am going to discuss few question of science and environment from tomorrow onwards you will have your environment classes for ncert okay this question this question is about the methane production methane production methane is produced in anaerobic conditions and rice fields are flooded with water and that provides the an anaerobic environment that's why in this you will have rice as answer and you can see in my classes you will find these slides and you can see source of methane is growing paddy directly you can answer the rice b option will be your answer okay same way system of rice <coughs> intensification last wednesday in current affair class i discussed this topic last wednesday the link is below the link of the video is below okay ncert classes will be offline on, uh, only online classes are provided okay then you can see it's about the i have discussed these thing in your class also while discussing the india's nuclear program india's nuclear program in ncert classes also okay then you can see this statement this statement is extreme statement i told you it's not entire indian coast it's kerala tamil nadu coast where you will find monojite sand and by eliminating three you can answer you can eliminate this you can eliminate this you can eliminate this b will be your answer we have discussed this in class in ncert batch also in advanced batch also okay i have discussed in detail about thorium where it is produced everything i have discussed then this is about wetlands about ramsar sites and in class i specially told the students that first 28 ramsar sites are very important these are the ramsar site before 2012 they were declared before 2012 they are most important ramsar site because they they are the important lakes also okay the new ones are smaller wetland sites the old ones are bigger wetland sites and these are important and these all are before 2012 ramsar sites okay so you can see and from the map we can see two options are correct one is in tripura and second is in himachal answer will be only two pairs then about rain forest and wetlands 
so there is a comparison of rainforest with trop tropical rainforest with lungs and wetlands with kidney the function of kidney is purification purification and same way wetland what they do they purify the water they will take out the excess of nutrients and heavy metal pollutants and this you can see i taught in our class shoreline against erosion and pollutants they they are kind of observers what they will observe they observe the excess of nutrients from surface water they will observe pollutants fine then this is from your air pollution this question is from air pollution and you can see in the slides the amount of the maximum amount of your pm particulate matter 2.5 should be 15 microgram per meter cube and this was your first option and other things also we have discussed in class this complete topic was discussed in class in same way this is this question is controversial most of the keys are saying answer is both one and two but in my class i have discussed this in detail in you can go to the link of this youtube video where you will find your answer in first 14 minutes the high clouds the effect of high clouds is opposite it's not the cooling effect it's the warming effect and low clouds have cooling effect the both statements are wrong this i have discussed in ncrt batch also this b cell and t cells third line of defense of human body third line of defense i have discussed this in detail in your ncrt batch also getting my point this one can you read the first statement other than those made by humans nanoparticle do not exist exist in nature can you see this major natural processes releasing nanoparticles so they exist exist in nature this is from our advanced class batch in same way question on consider the following carbon monoxide nitrogen oxide ozone sulfur dioxide which one of these are responsible for acid rain obviously nitrogen oxide and sulfur oxides this has been discussed in advanced class and in ncrt batch also in science class also okay now snigdha ma'am will overtake this class she will discuss the ir questions good evening students so here in this session we are trying to help you out in showing that how uh, how our classes the classes at raj manotra's is and also our youtube channel can be instrumental in your success for upsc so you have already seen that how economy questions geography questions and then environment questions were directly you know asked by upsc from the lectures and the youtube series that we take here at Rashmanotra's IS, right? So now I'll be showing you the questions that came from the area that I handle here, that is your IR and history part, right? So the very first question, the question was, what does the term Levant mean, right? What does it correspond to? So uh, the students who have attended my world history lectures, they would know that I discuss the idea of ISIS in my lectures. So, if you know the ISIS and you know that it is also known as ISIL, you would be able to relate Levant with the part of Iraq and Syria, right? Levant is nothing but Syria, right? If you know this, then you can uh, confidently at attempt this question, right? Try to attempt if, if you want to, right? ISIS ki full form kya hai? You all know Islamic State, you know, of Iraq and Syria, 
right and it is also known as islamic state of iraq and levant right so that means levant is equivalent to syria and that shows that this levant refers to the eastern mediterranean shores right so that is what the first question is now the second uh, question asked you about the boundaries of afghanistan right read the question what are the areas that border afghanistan right so while discussing while taking the ir session on the thursdays i had discussed about bamiya buddhas again a very important topic abhi to upsc ne is saal to pucha nahi but you may expect this question also next year next year right so there i discussed the geographical boundaries of afghanistan also right you see afghanistan all the borders have been shown here tajikistan uzbekistan turkmenistan iran and pakistan somewhere here india also india claims right so you can directly answer this question if you have heard this discussion with me right so the next was this question about the international organizations so we have so it the question was asking about india's membership to these organization right so we have already discussed sco the shanghai cooperation organization and i also mentioned in the session that this is very important any time a question can be asked so you see this year itself it was asked whether india is a member of sco or not right so directly again from the session that we had on thursday right now again a very important topic senkaku islands right you had to tell what is senkaku islands related to right so if you have been following my thursday discussions you will see that i discussed india japan relations in detail in one of my thursday sessions right and while discussing india japan relations i clearly discuss the issues of japan with china right and there the issue of senkaku island came up very clearly right while discussing the common grounds where india and japan can cooperate that was fighting china in somehow in some ways there i discussed the issue of senkaku islands also right again a question from the thursday series and then finally this question is there that talks about various countries and the situations that are prevailing here right so in one of my sessions i discussed the important projects or the port cities that china has located in various parts of the world right so one of the most important area that i discussed was djibouti a port in africa where china has made its permanent establishment right so if you know that fact now you be, would be easily eliminating this part of the question right so that was about it right if you want to take the you know right so these are all the questions that show that how you know our lectures our youtube channel is so much sufficient for you to prepare for your upsc preparation right so i would uh, encourage you all to join our ncert batch that is joining from tomorrow right you will see that all these things are discussed to some extent in the ncert level in the ncert batch and for the students who are already in the ncert batch please try to get into the advanced course you so that you can also attend our full fledged lectures which cover every of these topics in detail right so all the best for your preparation and now i'll hand over the mic to surbhi ma'am she'll discuss her part of the questions thank you good evening students i hope i'm audible just just send a message or a comment if i'm audible to you so that i know okay great so we are good to go well i'm surbhi sardana and uh, if you have been following our youtube channel i have taken a series called prelim sprint and seize the mains on youtube today we are discussing prelims only so we'll talk only about prelim sprint so what happened 
we decided as an institute that it is our responsibility to give you quality content entirely free of cost so on youtube par on our youtube channel we ran this series for around you know 36 odd days we covered all the essential topics from where upsc has a tendency to ask questions year after year and we covered around 30 topics and we are glad to tell you that around 15 to 20 questions out of those 30 topics can be directly solved from there so we'll see what are those questions we'll discuss them and i'll tell you that how easy it is to crack prelims if you have the right guidance if you have the right people supporting you so just bear with me till we start this i hope all of you are doing good it's been a long session I hope you're happy, relaxed, and you're not freaking out over how tough the exam was. See, people who crack this paper are also human beings like us. It's always about the guidance and the timing. If you are in the right state of your mind, and if you have the right guidance, everything is possible. You can crack this exam in your very first attempt. So no need to worry. So this is uh, prelims print 2022 essential topics for UPSC CSC prelims. This ran for like 36 days, and now let's see what are the questions that have been directly asked from here. just hold on there is some yeah there we go just hold on for a while there is a technical glitch here yes so the first question here is the world's second tallest statue in sitting pose of ramanuja was inaugurated by the prime minister of india see this is an art and culture question aise questions dekhkar when you when we see such questions in the exam people freak out that okay such some statue was inaugurated it's, it was there in current affairs but the question is very simple it talks about ramanuja and his philosophy so if you go back to my series on prelim sprint in the bhakti and sufi movement lecture 1 the first thing that we discussed was the second thinker that we discussed uh, from bhakti movement was ramanuja and if you look at the first line here that salvation can be attained through devotion and bhakti karm and gyan and that is exactly your first option so ye aapka question directly solve ho raha hai so this is a direct question you did, you do not need to go anywhere else except our youtube channel so sal the best means of salvation was devotion so this was the answer now uh, going to the second question it talked about disputed islands the question was about senkaku islands senkaku islands are located in east china sea if you go back to my mapping series of southeast asia there we discussed in detail the south china sea and we talked about senkaku islands which are not in south china sea we talked about artificial islands which have been made by china in the south china sea and we talked about paracels carboro shoal and spratly island senkaku was not a part of that and senkaku islands are located in the east china sea so this was discussed a lot in detail again if you have just watched that particular video on mapping you can easily handle this question and you can get plus 2 on this the next one uh, you know the most popular the highest views which i have received which we have received were on important judgments of supreme court and important constitutional amendments see these these topics are covered extensively in your classes also but we made it a point that these topics are important so a series should be there and videos should videos should be dedicated to them so look at your question number 13 of set a a bill amending the constitution requires a prior recommendation of the president of india this is your basic polity knowledge which is which is taught by uh, taught by our faculty in their normal polity classes when a constitution amendment bill is present uh, presented to the president of india it is obligatory for the president of india to give his or her assent when we talked about the 24th amendment of 1971 and this was a very short video in two parts so we discussed that it 24th amendment made it compulsory for the president to give his assent assent to the constitutional amendment bill so this question can be solved through elimination directly from this lecture so this is how important these questions were we always are there to provide quality content to our students and this is this paper has proved that yes the way we are we are addressing upsc we are targeting upsc preparation is 
the right way the next one is the 91st amendment act of 2003 this is a this is a snapshot of the headline of the hindu this is an old uh, snapshot this is an old headline and i showed you the snapshot here that cabinet strength has not to exceed 15% of lok sabha strength and look at this statement number 2 here the first statement can be answered any very easily if you have studied polity even once the second statement required knowledge of this particular amendment which was discussed in the series so this can be handled very well only the part 2 is correct and the answer is b for this question the next one is which of the following are the exclusive powers of lok sabha see in any question or in most of the questions which you see in your prelims exam you will not know all the answers even the toppers which you know crack prelims by a very good margin they know mostly around 30 to 40 questions about which they are sure baki ke sare questions all other questions are handled through elimination method and intelligent guessing so this is where the role of your knowledge comes in if you know these amendments if you know these essential topics if you have taken our classes then you can easily swiftly crack prelims so it talks about what are the exclusive powers of lok sabha and here in 44th amendment of 1978 we discussed that 44th amendment made the president to declare a national emergency only on the written recommendation of the cabinet so whenever emergency has to be declared written recommendation of cabinet is required so lok sabha will not have any uh, ratification ki jo power hai the power of lok sabha to ratify the declaration of emergency will not be exclusive to lok sabha because uh, the cabinet is also involved there so if you are doing intelligent guessing and you are doing intelligent elimination your option 1 gets eliminated your two options are eliminated rest of the options only 2 and 3 are left so only b and d are left and you have to guess from there and if you have read polity even once you'll be able to reach to the right answer so that's how simple it is just by targeting few topics taught by your teachers in detail just by listening to your teachers just by following the content that has been provided on our youtube channel and taking our courses you can easily crack this exam now see here we talked about some missions of nasa in the second last video if you go to the 35th lecture on our youtube channel of prelim sprint we talked about nasa space space missions and i taught you about the parker solar probe what is parker solar probe it is a probe that has been sent by nasa to sun and it was recently in news because it has reached the corona layer of sun and corona layer of sun is important for solar flares india is also india has also launched a solar mission nasa has also launched, launched a solar mission and we are targeting to study corona why is corona so important it is important because of solar flares so nas so upsc did not ask you about parker solar probe it did not ask you about the mission to sun that is being you know that is being sent by isro but what it asked you was the concept the depth that why are we doing this because we want to study the solar flares and when i taught you about parker solar probe here while discussing the significance i taught you that why are solar flares important because these are kind of storms these are solar storms when they reach the earth they cause aurora aurora borealis and aurora australis secondly what they do is they cause a lot of devastation they destroy our communication systems so if you look at this question after studying the significance and if you do not let any second thoughts come into your mind which is related to tsunamis or forest fires which are totally unrelatable to this then you can easily reach to the answer which is 1 3 4 6 and 7 only which consists of you know communication satellites gps and navigation systems could fail power grids could be damaged and things like that so this intelligent guessing can take you to the right answer this way if you follow now the next question is about the polar code while discussing united nations and its specialized agencies we discussed one of the organizations called international maritime organization and it was part of important international organization uh, video that we did the discussion that we did an international maritime organization is responsible for checking pollution in international waters it is responsible for international shipping and polar code was discussed here and it was find it was found directly in your question paper so that's how important these areas were again this uh, fourth uh, statement here was about arctic council it was there to confuse you so if you have taken that series if you have attended my lecture you would know that arctic council has nothing to nothing to do with the polar code the next one is the 78th question which is directly from united nations general assembly 
so all those 9 10 points that we discussed in our in the uh, prelim sprint series from general assembly through those uh, with the knowledge of those all uh, th uh, that all of that information your two statements can be easily handled and you can reach to the right answer with the help of these two statements and a little knowledge of united nations general assembly moving on again uh, sigda ma'am also discussed this this question that which uh, organization is india a part of asian infrastructure investment bank missile technology control regime or shanghai cooperation organization cmtcr has been talked again and again when it comes to brahmos missile and brahmos missile has been discussed in our current affairs class also because earlier the range of brahmos was less after when india became a partner uh, when india became a member of mtcr the range of agni agni missile brahmos missile that was increased also shanghai cooperation organization has been discussed discussed exclusively in the important international organizations that we discussed so this question was very easy to handle the next one is about west africa see one of the first series uh, one of the first lectures that we took was on mapping and mapping uh, when it came to mapping the first lecture that we took was about africa because africa is a continent from where questions in upsc have been seen again and again whether it's about rivers lakes anything plateaus uh, there in africa or uh, you know places located in africa so this was the series the first lecture the important mapping part was there from africa and if you see here see the first uh, thing the first catch you have here is about west africa so when i told you that where does the nile originate you know nile river is located in the eastern part of africa if you've taken my class so and it uh, originates from lake victoria a uh, part of uh, river nile originates from lake victoria and lake victoria is towards the eastern part of africa so this option can be easily cancelled now lake volta gives rise to a river called river volta in africa so your two options can be eliminated and these two are lesser known rivers so this this uh, this question can be handled through guesswork again lewand lewand has been discussed again and again uh, in sigda ma'am's lecture also in my lecture also when we discussed mediterranean sea in our mapping series that it is located all the uh, you know bordering areas of Med mediterranean sea towards the eastern side of mediterranean sea constitute the lewand so this was again very easy to take the next one and you know this is one of my favorite questions why because this seems to be a very long question and uh, these countries are you know they are very hard to remember because the area, these are very small countries and the area is very confusing but if you go back what are they asking they are asking you the borders of afghanistan if you go back to the mapping series where we discuss the borders of caspian sea you know azerbaijan has nothing to do with afghanistan here so even if you remember this thing azerbaijan here gets eliminated your option 1 gets eliminated and you're left only with option c so nothing to do about it nothing to worry about it mapping became very simple by just four lectures if you have taken those the next one is about the wildlife protection act this seems to be a very tough question question number 89 um uh, it says that wild animals are the sole property of the government and you know tough statements like that but if you have gone through the lecture on wildlife protection act the important environmental acts and legislations that we discussed just the 10 points just the 10 points that have been discussed about wpa in our series they are more than enough to handle this question so your answer here would be one and two only it says that if a if a wild animal irrespective of the schedule that it is put in if it becomes a danger or a threat to human uh, life or property then it can be killed this is a kind of you know a very generalized statement and we uh, we know that india's main mandate is to protect forest and wildlife so this cannot be true so even if you have not taken any lectures even if you use just your common sense you can reach to the right answer so this was about it the prelims was uh, definitely on the tougher a uh, tougher end i uh, wish uh, like good luck to all the students who have taken this but through effective guidance through quality coaching through uh, guidance uh, through good faculty and the right institute prelims mains interview all stages of exam can be handled uh, now i would request uh, madhu sir to come back again he will uh, he will uh, tell you about whatever are the courses coming up and your environment class that will uh, resume from tomorrow onwards good luck for your preparation and good luck for your journey see you
आई होप यू गाइस आर स्टिल हियर अच्छा कमिंग बैक ए हाफ एन आवर बिफोर वी वर डिस्कसिंग आकांक्षा जैन काजल ओके आई नो यू आर माई स्टूडेंट्स इन एन सी आर टी एंड दो स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव बीन नॉट पार्ट ऑफ अवर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और नॉट पार्ट ऑफ दिस जर्नी ऑफ प्रिपरेशन आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू सम थिंग्स सी गाइज बी एवर बी वॉट एवर द मोड ऑफ प्रिपरेशन इज वेदर इट इज ऑनलाइन वेदर इट इज ऑफलाइन वेदर इट इज एनी कोर्स ए क्लासरूम कोर्स एन सी आर टी कोर्स ऑनलाइन कोर्स ऑफलाइन कोर्स देर इज नो राइट वे टू डू ए रॉन्ग प्रिपरेशन एंड देर इज नो रॉन्ग वे टू डू ए राइट प्रिपरेशन इट इज देर शुड बी राइट मीन्स एंड देर शुड ऑल्सो बी राइट एंड नाउ हाउ टू अचीव दिस यू ऑलरेडी नो राज सर हेज स्पोकन टू यू आई हैोन माई क्वेश्चन सुरभि मैम हैज शोन हर क्वेश्चन प्रहलाद सर इवन स्निग्धा मैम मोहित सर एज वेल सो लाइक दिस our institutional journey is most most of the times we are oriented towards the goal in this goal reaching towards goal our means is through meet those ends through the proper current affairs methods proper technical methods we come up through data analysis once we analyze we go for interpretations once we interpret then we will pitch in for the areas what need to be studied so without having a proper data you cannot analyze neither can you interpret right so we go up with the models where upsc can ask what are the areas that can be asked now those models are nothing but the results of whatever you have seen it till now right and someone who is part of this ncert course who have been there who have traveled with me for last one week in the geography class they would be understanding the value of these courses small courses in a matter of 60 days if you are able to complete your entire ncrts what else do you need ncrts alone alone can get you 30 to 40% of the marks and what else do you need when you can read your current affairs on your own apart from that and definitely ncrt is the base but that is not the sufficient entity you definitely need some advanced level understanding but advanced level understanding where do you get from it is from the ncrts again if you don't have an ncrt understanding and if you try to understand something beyond that you will miss out your basics now you are as strong as your foundation it is and you guys are aware of it from tomorrow we are going to start with environment right pralad sir will be taking up your environment with all the components that are required to clear your upsc examination and the basics that are required to understand the advanced level of courses right tomorrow it will start with environment component evening 5 pm to 8 pm 5 pm to 8 pm we will be taking up the components of environment here it will be dealt in climate change components biodiversity and the ecology you know this is the area where 18 questions were present even with the basic ncert understanding one can answer 8 to 10 questions you don't right 8 to 10 questions that is something a very big it's a game changing entity right and i won't be bothering you much just an information if you are targeting for 23 24 or 25 and you wanted to become a civil servant i think this is the best time to start your preparation right you also know for how long your courses will be there how long you will have access to those courses that have been already briefed to you right so i'd now be ending that saying you that we have environment courses starting from tomorrow starting with ncert anyone who would like to achieve their targets for the year 23 or 24 this is the right time to join and be part of our organization and if you have any queries any queries you can message me here 73 Eight two double five double two three zero. My name is Madhusudan Reddy. I can speak Telugu. I can speak Hindi. I can speak English, Kannad, and understand Gujarati as well. You can talk to me in any, any language, right? And if you have any queries, please post up your queries. I'll be taking up. And please make sure to message me before you call you because we'll be. uh it's very difficult for you to for me to take up all the calls so here I have a question from kajal sir 
sir i done my graduation from science background so i am just little scared so you need not to be scared no matter what background it is there are students from iits there are students from the local colleges for them the paper is same so you need, need not fear what you read they also read it is a fresh start the fresh start will always start from ncrts if you have the right guidance of the ncrts you are in the right path and you can compete with anyone the best of the best who are sitting in the top level institutions with the local guys they are now reading the same books and this understanding is something which what what is you require right so do not fear right and the course has not been briefed to you the coursing the courses of ncrts which will be covered in 60 to 70 days of the entire ncrts in a very crisp and clear manner and then you will be in a position to understand all the advanced level understanding which is required for upsc examination right the links have been already provided to you right is tomorrow the first batch of ncrt batch yes for those of you joining tomorrow that will be the first component is environment right pralad sir will be taking up and he is very good at making things very easy hello sir it is a question by asha i was graduated in 2015 but it's long days gap these are very difficult to me no issues asha these are very easy components what you are going to read what you are going to read once you read the ncrts from class 6 to 12 whatever we have discussed here seems like difficult to you but those people who have completed their basics they will get to know how easy it is things only seem difficult but it is not it is a very easy examination the only it is only difficult because 10 lakh people are fighting for those 800 odd posts and if you want to become an ias ips or irs definitely you need to put that fight fear is not something which is needed it is the fighting spirit that you have to inculcate in you right and if you have any queries you can message me right tomorrow onwards we are going to start with the environment batch right clear i hope you are clear with this and any queries you can message me there and so i'm studying in final year engineering can i cope up yes you can easily cope up no matter which year you are what we are going to learn is from class 6 to class 12 whatever you have studied since class 6 to class 12 we are going to streamline your understanding and streamline your learning in the direction of the upsc examination right clear okay guys see you and see you in the environment batch and i'll be taking up your geography hope i am hopeful that i to see you there right thank you guys for giving this opportunity and have a good preparation and a healthy preparation stay safe and stay healthy thank you guys